Ricky here. Hope you're having a great day. Uh, today we're going to talk about just a little bit of a review for the 4-1 to 4-3 quiz, which you guys have it coming up next class. First thing I want to do is uh, just go through what's going to be on the quiz. So conversion uh, between angle measures, so going from degrees, minutes, and seconds, that's the degrees, minutes, and seconds thing, uh, to decimal degrees, that's where you just have a decimal, and radians, of course, which is, uh, remember, one radian is the length that one radius would wrap around the outside of the circle. Um, arc length, which there were, we had the two formulas for, or you can think about the percentage of the circle. Uh, dimensional analysis, which is where we're converting units using the box method, kind of. Um, Sokotoa and Chachokau. Uh, and then the unit circle, which is what we've been focusing on the last few days. Um, radians and degrees, positive and negative, and extended values. That's where, you know, if you go up, if it's positive, you go down, if it's negative. If it's more than 2 pi, like 17 pi over 3, something like that, you have to know how you get to that point. And then all six trig functions. So sine, cosine, tangent, uh, secant, cosecant, and cotangent. Of those uh, normal 16 values on the circle. Terminal ray of an angle is something that we haven't talked about. And so we're going to go over that together today. So, uh, and then at the end, I'm going to show you some neat tricks uh, that kind of relate to this stuff. I wanted to do them while I was there, but I unfortunately didn't have time. So at the end of the video today, if you're done with it and you think you've got it, don't, wa don't watch them. But I've got some kind of cool tricks that we can show you. So let's jump in. So first we're going to do a little conversion here. So we've got 23 pi over 15. We're going to convert that to degrees and also to degree minutes and seconds. So 23 pi over 15 must be radians because there are no units there. So 23 pi over 15, put it into the box. So we want to do a 180 and a pi. I want the radians to cancel, so the pi goes on the bottom, 180 degrees on the top. I'm going to rewrite that as 20, oops, not 123 pi, just 23 pi over 15 times 180 over pi. The pi's cancel. 180 divided by 15, uh, that value, you might have to do it in pieces, but if I divide them both by, uh, let's say, 3, so that'd be 60 over 5, which I believe is 12. So this is 23, oops, keep doing that. 23 times 12, you can grab a calculator at any point here, but let's see if, uh, if I grab it now. So 180 divided by 15, double check that that's 12, and it is, and multiply by 23, I get 276 degrees. Now, that value, unfortunately, is not going to be a good degree minute seconds problem because there's no decimal after it. So let's actually do, um, for converting degree minute seconds, let's do 276.7125 degrees. And let's see if that's going to work out a little bit better. So um, what we're going to do is put that into our box. Oh, not yet. So the 276, we know we have 276 degrees. We need to know how many minutes and how many seconds. So we'll start with the uh, 0.7125 degrees. And we know that one degree, put that on the bottom because we want it to cancel, is worth 60 minutes. So let's see how many minutes we have. So we do 0.7125 multiply by 60. And I get uh, 42.75. So that means we have 47, or 42 minutes, excuse me. So we took that right there. And then we have 0.75 minutes left. One minute is 60 seconds. So that's three quarters of 60. I think I know what that is. Let's check anyway. 0.75 times 60 is 45. So we have 45 minutes. That's how you convert from degrees to degrees, minutes, seconds. Change the decimal to minutes, and then take the decimal of the minutes, change those to seconds. Cool. Okay, so... Um, Doing a, uh, and remember going, man, I don't have a problem with this. So going from degrees, minutes, seconds back to uh, degrees, remember that you have to take each piece and convert it to degrees, and you add all three pieces together. So you might want to go back in your notes for a problem like that. So Carly and Elena are on a Ferris wheel. And the wheel has a radius of 45 feet. Let's make our feet here. There we go. Okay, there are Carly and Elena. Yay. All right, and uh, it says that the wheel rotates through 84 degrees. How far do the girls travel? So 84 is almost 90. That's probably a little too small. But the question is, how far do the girls travel? So how far is that arc length? What's the length of that arc? So we have 84 pieces out of 360. We're multiplied by the circumference of the entire circle, because this is going to give us the percentage of the circumference we want. So we have 2 pi times 45. Grab our calculator and just punch that in. So 84 out of 360. I get 0.233, multiply by 2 pi, multiply that by 45, and I get 65.97 feet. 
So in 84 degrees, which is somewhere between 1 and 2 radians, makes sense to me, um, that you're going to end up going somewhere between 45 and 90, 65.97 feet. Cool. Um, might want to grab a calculator and actually do these calculations along with me. Not a bad idea. And at any time, if you want to try these problems on your own, go ahead and pause the video, and then you can bring it back and, and we'll do them together. But I'm just going to kind of keep plowing through. All right, dimensional analysis. So Ryan Tamte claims he can bag groceries at 32 items per minute. If an average of seven, seven items fit in a bag and 12 bags fit in a car, how many cars does Ryan fill in his eight-hour shift? All right, well, let's see. I'm going to start with our 32 items per minute. We want to end up with cars per shift, I guess. So we want cars per shift. And we have all of the, um, the uh, conversion factors that we need in here. So 37 items per minute. Let's take care of the getting the time to a shift first. So we know eight hours are in a shift. So we got to get to hours first. There's 60 minutes in one hour. So the minutes go away. And then eight hours in one shift. So the hours go away. So now we have shift on the bottom, which is what we want. So we've got that all taken care of. Now we've got to get items into cars. So uh, 32 items. And we have seven items in one bag. So items cancels. And then 12 bags in one car. Bags are gone. So now we have cars per shift. Now we should multiply straight across the top. So I'm going to grab my calculator. 32 times 60 times 8. I get 15360 divided by um, 15 times 12, 7 times 12. So 15 times 7 times 12, I get 1260. So 15360. Divided by 1260, I get 12.19 cars that he fills in an eight-hour shift. That's all there is. Let's try another one. A merry-go-round has a radius of 20 feet. There we go. And completes a revolution in 12 seconds. So one revolution is 12 seconds. What is the speed of the outside of the merry-go-round in meters per hour? So I want meters on top. I want hours on the bottom. So I'm going to put si uh, seconds on the bottom because that's where I want the time to be. So one revolution is 12 seconds. Now we're going to change to radians. So one revolution is 2 pi radians. And one radian in this case is going to be equal to the length of the radius. That's 20 feet. Now, the annoying thing here, uh, so we've got revolutions gone, we've got our radians gone. We need to change into meters. Well, I don't know how many feet are in a meter, but I've got a unit conversion here of 2.54 inches to a centimeter. So I've got to take my feet to inches, and then one inch is 2.5. Oh, I mixed this up. I am so sorry. This should be inches, and this should be centimeters. My bad. Did that too late last night. <laughs> uh, so 2.5 centimeters to one inch, and there are 100 centimeters to one meter. So we've got our meters. Centimeters are gone. Inches are gone. Feet are gone. Radians are gone, but I didn't write them. So we now have meters, which is what we want, and then we got to get the bottom to hours. So 60 seconds in one minute. Seconds are gone. And then 60 minutes in one hour. Minutes are gone. So now I think we have, let's see, meters per hour, which is what we wanted. So we multiply all the way across the top. So I'm going to leave the pi alone. So we got 2 times 20 times 12 times 2.54 gives me 1219.2 pi. And on the bottom, 12 times 100, that's 1200. So it looks like if we do, oh, this is, oh, no, we got the pi. I was going to say this is pretty slow. One revolution every 12 seconds? I don't know. Let's see. So we got 1219 pi divided by 1200. 1219.2, excuse me. Gives me 3.1918. That seems very slow. You know why? Because I think I forgot this extra 60. I think that's why. So I'm going to get rid of these. Try that again. So 2 times 20 times 12 times 2.54 times 60, and then 60 again. Ah, that looks better. 
So upstairs, we have uh, 4, 3, 8, 9, 1, 2, 0, pi. And on the bottom, I think we were actually right, that was 1,200. So if we do this times pi and divide by 1,200, ah, that looks better, that is 11490 meters per hour, 0.68. Cool. All right, moving on. So we're looking for the six trig functions of the given reference angle. So we have the six trig functions of theta. So sine theta, cosine theta, tan theta, secant theta, cosecant theta, and cotangent theta. I'm going to use uh, Sokotoa and Shachokau here. We need to find that last side first, so it's called x. So we got x squared plus root 13 squared equals 7 squared. So that's x squared plus 13 equals 49 subtract, we got x squared equals 36, yeah, that's nice, x is 6. So sine, opposite over hypotenuse, 6 sevenths. Cosine, adjacent over hypotenuse, root 13 over 6. Tangent, opposite over adjacent, 6 over root 13. Now we don't like the root in the bottom. For the quiz, I'm, yeah, I'm okay with you leaving the root in the bottom because it shows you know the function, but really we should multiply by root 13 over root 13. So that is 6 root 13 over 13. Secant. Secant is hypotenuse over adjacent. That's 7 over root 13. Rationalize that. It'll be 7 root 13 over 13. Cosecant is hypotenuse over opposite. 7, 6. We can leave that alone. Cotangent, adjacent over opposite. Root 13 over 6 can also be left alone. That's all there is to it. All right, <clears throat> if theta is an acute angle and tangent is 3 halves, we're going to find the other five trig functions of theta. So I'm going to make a triangle here. I'm actually going to try to make it relatively correct. So here's theta. Opposite over adjacent is 3 over 2. Of course, I didn't do it right. The 3 should be longer. Um, and we have to find the other five trig functions. So we have to find this third side. Um, and this third side is going to be, uh, let's see, so x squared would be 4 plus 9, so x is root 13. That's really the only difference with this problem, is you have to find that third side first. So sine, opposite of hypotenuse, 3 over root 13, which would re uh, rationalize to 3 root 13 over 13. Cosine of theta, adjacent of hypotenuse, is 2 over root 13, which is 2 root 13 over 13. Tangent, we already have, is 3 halves, opposite over adjacent. Um, secant, secant is hypotenuse over adjacent, that's root 13 over 2. Cosecant is, uh, let's see, Joe, hypotenuse over opposite, that's root 13 over 3. And cotangent is going to be adjacent over opposite, which is 2 thirds. And that's all there is to that problem. Not too bad. All right, unit circle stuff. So um, there are 10 unit circle problems on your quiz, and they're a mix of sine, cosine, tangent, positive, negative values. Some of them are extended, so we're going to try to catch them all here. So cosine of 5 pi over 6, I think about that. 5 pi over 6 is 1, 2, 3, 4. 5 is right there. Cosine there is the long value, and it's negative because it's on the left, so it's negative root 3 over 2. Sine of 5 pi over 4, 1, 3, 5. That's this guy down here. Sine is going to be negative there, negative root 2 over 2, because it's one of the corners. Sine of negative 4 pi over 3, negative goes down, that's 8 pi over 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 is right up here. Sine is the y value, so it's the long one here, it's going to be root 3 over 2. Tangent of negative 2 pi, well negative 2 pi doesn't matter which direction you go, but that's going to get me right back to here, that's 0. Tangent of 7 pi over 4, 1, 3, 5, 7, right there. Tangent there is going to be some kind of 1, and because sine and cosine have different signs, it's negative 1. 19 pi over 6. All right, a couple ways to do this. One is we can just keep counting. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, which is right there. Or you can say, well, 12 pi over 6 is all the way around, and then left over you have 7 pi over 6, which brings us there. Those are coterminal angles. They both end you at the same spot, and that's all that matters for finding tangent. Tangent there will be the short value, and it's positive root 3 over 3. 
Secant, secant of 11 pi over 6. So 11 pi over 6 is almost all the way around right there. Secant uses the normal tangent lines. It's the shortest value of secant that isn't 1. So that's going to be 2 root 3 over 3. And it's positive because we're on the right side of the circle, and that deals with cosine. This is 1 over cosine, so positive because we're on the right. Cotangent of negative pi over 6. Negative pi over 6 puts us in the same spot. Cotangent there is going to use the cotangent lines. It's the long value for cotangent. That is pi, uh, root 3. And it's going to be negative because sine and cosine have different signs there. Cosecant of negative 5 pi over 4. 1, 3, 5. Right there. Cosecant uses the cotangent lines. Cosecant deals with sine. So it will be positive here because it's above the x-axis. And so it will be positive root 3. If you can do those nine, you're going to be all set, I believe, for the, uh, the quiz coming up. All right, so the terminal ray of an angle. So for the terminal ray of an angle, sometimes what you'll be told is something like um, the terminal ray, terminal ray of theta passes through a certain point. So it passes through... Uh, let's say 4, negative 3, let's say. So for a problem like this, I always make a picture. So I'm going to find out where 4, negative 3 is. 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 1, 2, 3, right there. Okay. So the terminal ray of an angle, that means that the ray passes through there. So what they're saying is that you have a theta that starts at standard position, and it goes all the way around to that point. And then what they might ask for is uh, find the sine and cosine. Okay. So find sine of theta and cosine of theta. Okay, and you could find tangent, cotangent, secant, cosecant, all those things as well. Uh, but really all you have to do is you have to make a reference triangle that makes this happen. And the key <clears throat> is that you need to make sure that you have the sine and cosine in the correct spots. So what I would do for this is I would make this into a triangle. Now the important thing is where you put theta. Because some people like to make the triangle here and put theta there, that won't work because you need to make sure that the cosine deals with the x value. So you need your theta to be adjacent to the x-axis. That's always the way I think about it. Is theta needs to be adjacent to the x-axis. If it's not adjacent to the x-axis, you're, you're going to get a wrong answer. So if we break that triangle out, it looks like this. So theta adjacent to the x-axis, there it is. So um, 4, negative 3 is the coordinate point there. That means this length is 4. And this guy is negative 3. You could make it just a 3 and then figure out the signs later. I think it's easier to do it this way. So we need to find the hypotenuse. So a squared plus b squared, 16 plus 9 is 25. Square root of 25 is 5. So we have a 3, 4, 5 right triangle. So to find sine, sine of theta is going to be opposite of hypotenuse, negative 3 fifths. And cosine of theta, cosine of theta would be 4 fifths. Now really, if you think about this, what we're doing is uh, the length of this is 5. If we draw our unit circle, it would maybe go like right there. What you're doing is you're taking this coordinate and you're reducing it down to where it's going to be in the unit circle. So dividing by 5 makes that hypotenuse 1. You don't have to know that. It's just uh, if you make the triangle, it's kind of interesting to see that like what you're doing is you're taking a big circle that would be all the way out here and you're reducing it down to a unit circle by dividing by the hypotenuse because that will make the radius be 1. Now let's have you guys try a few. Uh, what do we got here? I get um, terminal ray passes through um, negative 5, root 2. Okay, and for all these, you're going to be fine sine and cosine. So sine of theta and cosine of theta. And you know what? If you want to find tan and secant, cosecant, cotangent, you can do that as well. It's just going to be using uh, Sokotoa and Shachokau after, uh, after you get the triangle. So let's do negative 5 two, root 2, let's do 0, negative 3, and uh, 7, 0. So if you want to give these a shot, you can uh, kind of just draw a picture yourself and see if you can figure it out. All right, so the first one is very similar to the one we just did. So if I go to negative 5 root 2, I'm going to need over here. So here, let's say it's right here. Okay, negative 5 comma root 2. So I'm going to draw my triangle. There we go. And I want theta adjacent to the x-axis always. So we have this triangle. Here's theta. Here's negative 5. Here's root 2. Got to find the hypotenuse. So that's 2 plus 25. So I guess this is root 27. 
We could reduce that because that would be three root three, right there. Um, and so, but we can let's just use it as uh, as root twenty seven. So cosine, cosine theta adjacent over hypotenuse negative five over root twenty seven. If we rationalize, that's negative five root twenty seven over twenty seven. And then uh, for sine, sine of theta is going to be opposite of hypotenuse. That's root two over root twenty seven. Multiply by root 27 over root 27 gives us root 54 over 27. And again, you could rationalize this. You could take out a 9. I guess it would be, uh, what, 3 root 6? But you don't have to do that. So for these, I wanted to make sure to include these because they're a little bit weird. 0, negative 3 is right here. And if we just think about it, sorry, I should draw graph 1, 2, 3 right there. So if that is the terminal ray of an angle, <clears throat> it's at the bottom of the circle. And the cosine value there is 0, and the sine value there is negative 1. Okay. So these that are on the axes are a little bit different, but it just, you just have to think, well, that means I'm at the bottom of the circle, because if the terminal ray of the angle is there, it doesn't matter what size the circle is, whether it's a unit circle or whether it's a 3 or 7 or whatever, um, the angle puts you at the bottom of the circle. You're at 3 pi over 2. 7, 0, same idea. 7, 0 puts you out to the right. So cosine is going to be 1, and sine is going to be 0. So just kind of a different way of thinking about trig functions. Not too bad, though. Oh, uh, I have some problems for you if you want to give them a shot. I forgot I had these here. So if you want to try these out, go ahead, and then we'll try them together. <clears throat> All right, 3, 5. Here's 3, 5. So that gives us a 3, 4, 5 right triangle. 3 here, 5 here. This is, uh, sorry, no, it doesn't because the 5 is the y-coordinate. So this would be 25 and 9 is 34, would be root 34. And here's our theta. We want it adjacent to the x-axis. So cosine would be 3 over root 34, which is 3 root 34 over 34. Sine would be 5 over root 34, which is 5 root 34 over 34. Negative 8, 4. Let's say it's like here. Here's our triangle, theta adjacent to the x-axis. <clears throat> so, um, let's see, we have 4, negative 8, here's theta. So this would be uh, root 16 and 64, that would be square root of 80. Could do some simplifying there, but I'm not going to. Cosine would be negative 8 over root 80, which is negative 8 root 80 over 80. You could reduce that to one-tenth, I suppose, so negative root 80 over 10. The reduction I'm not too concerned about, as long as you're getting the triangles. 5, negative root 3, somewhere over here. Get our theta adjacent to the x-axis. So we have a triangle that looks like this. So this is 5, this is negative root 3, this is theta. So uh, cosine theta will be 5, let's see, so 25 and 9 are... No, sorry, 25 and 3, 28. So this would be root 28. <clears throat> so cosine theta would be adjacent 5 over root 28, which is 5 root 28 over 28. And sine theta would be root negative root 3 over root 28, which would reduce to, let's see, 3 times 28, 90 minus 6, 50, uh, 84. So negative root 84 divided by 28. So there's a couple of problems on your homework assignment for tonight that, that deal with these uh, terminal rays. I want to make sure that you saw some of them before you jumped into it. All right, so now we're going to show some neat tricks. If you feel like you are happy with what you know about unit circle, you can definitely stop here. Um, just kind of want to go through some of the stuff that some people have said is useful. So first, the ninja and the hourglass have to do with finding radian values. So you may have noticed, like when you do the unit circle, the pi over sixes, there are only four of them on the circle, and they kind of make a ninja. So if you make it like this, you can kind of see like it's a guy wearing a mask. Okay, so uh, this is pi over 6. This would be 5 pi over 6. This is 7 pi over 6. This is 11 pi over 6. So I always kind of remember that at those points, like cosine is some kind of root 3 over 2. Sine is some kind of 1 half. And then you can extend this, right? Like that means secant would be 2 root 3 over 3. Cosecant would be 2. 
tangent is root 3 over 3 there, and cotangent is root 3. And then you have to figure out whether they're positive or negative, depending on which quadrant you're in, which we're going to talk about in the next slide. So you've got the ninja, and then the hourglass also does the same thing. The hourglass is where you have the pi over 3s. Pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, 4 pi over 3, and 5 pi over 3. And all of these, so these kind of flip everything around, right? Cosine is 1 half, or negative 1 half if you're on the left. Sine is root 3 over 2. Um, 2, excuse me. Uh, tangent is root 3. So then secant is 2. Uh, cosecant is 2 root 3 over 3. And cotangent is root 3 over 3. So just kind of the ninja and the hourglass, kind of two things that I think about when I'm doing the circle. When you do lots and lots and lots of these, you start recognizing these patterns. It's just kind of cool. All right, next up, all students take calculus. So this one has to do with where things are positive and where things are negative. Because, like, if you have, like, a cosecant of, let's say, like, 5 pi over 3. So 5 pi over 3 is this value right here. And it's like, okay, I know it's the uh, cotangent line because it's a co-function. And we extend it out. It's the length of this line. That looks short, so it's 2 root 3 over 3. But then it's like, ah, oh, gosh, is it positive or negative? I'm not sure. Well, the way I remember that is that it's 1 over sine. And sine there is negative, so it's going to have to be a negative value. Um... There's a way to remember when sine and cosine and tangent are positive, and it's all students take calculus. So it goes in the order of just how you would think about the circle going around in a counterclockwise fashion. All means that sine, cosine, and tangent are all positive there, because you have a positive sine, positive cosine, so when you divide them, tangent will also be positive. In the second quadrant, you have a negative cosine value and a positive sine value. So sine is the only one that's positive there, which means when you divide sine over cosine, it will also give you a negative value for tangent. So everything in the first quadrant positive. Second quadrant, sine is the only one that's positive. In the third quadrant, I think that tangent is the only one that's positive because we would have a negative sine and a negative cosine. So when you divide them, tangent is the only one that's positive. In the last quadrant, we're on the right side of the, uh, of the axes, so we're going to have a positive cosine, but then we're going to have a negative sine, so that'll make a negative tangent. So all students take calculus, um, and unfortunately, uh, because of the cosecant and secant, the letters don't match up, but if you remember that cosecant is 1 over sine, you'll be able to know on the bottom all of those will be negative, and for secant, for secant, that's associated with cosine, so on the left side, the secant values will all be negative. Just kind of a way to remember positives and negatives. All right, the last uh, trick I want to show you guys is called the, the five finger trick and uh, requires actually being able to see what I'm doing with my hand. So um, I thought I'd turn on the webcam for this one. And um, what it deals with is the fact that in the first quadrant, so if you just think about the first quadrant, uh, and we're just dealing with sine, cosine, and tangent. So we're just going to kind of draw in our values here. So here, we know the coordinates there are 1, 0. I'm going to write 1, 0 in kind of a weird way. So at 1, 0, I'm going to write root 4 over 2, comma, root 0 over 2. So let's just make sure that that's correct, right? Root 4 is 2, uh, divided by 2 is 1. And then root 0 divided by 2 is 0 over 2, which is 0. So we're good there. The next one, we know the coordinates here are root 3 over 2 for cosine. And then 1 half, I'm going to write that as root 1 over 2 for sine. You can kind of see where this is going. The next one is root 2 over 2 and root 2 over 2. The next one is uh, root 1 over 2 and root 3 over 2. And then the last one, make that actually a 3, uh, the last one is going to be root 0 over 2 for the x, good 0, and then root uh, 4 over 2 for 1. So what you notice here is that the cosine values actually start at 4, root 4, then root 3, root 2, root 1, and then root 0. So it's actually decreasing as we go up. And the sine values start at 0, root 0, root 1, root 2, root 3, root 4. So they actually are increasing as we go up. And if you actually think about using your hand for this, so what I'm going to do, I think I have this same picture behind me here. And get out of the way a little bit. So if you put your hand up in front of the unit circle, it has to be your left hand. Uh, the right hand would work, but you have to put it backwards. And you put your thumb right on the y-axis and your pinky right on the x-axis. And then your three fingers that are in between kind of represent the, the three green lines right here. So what you, want, what you can do is if you want to find like the sine and cosine of, let's say, pi over 6 right here, you would put down your ring finger 
because that's the one you're looking for. And then you notice that on the bottom, you have one finger that's left. That represents this root 1, so that's the sign. And then you have three fingers above. That represents your x-coordinate, so it's root 3. It works with all of them. Try it. Like if you did, um, even if you did 0. So you do 0, you put your, your pinky down. There's nothing below your pinky. So that's the root 0 over 2. That's your sign. And then the root 4 comes from the four fingers that are up on the left. Uh, pi over 3, right here. If you put down your pointer finger, you have root 3 over 2 for your sign, and you have root 1 over 2 for your cosine. So just kind of a cool little trick you can use with your hand to uh, be able to find sine and cosine in the first quadrant. So that's all I've got for you today. Uh, remember that you have your quiz on Monday. Uh, it covers everything that we did in this video. Um, and yeah, wish I could be with you guys today. Hope you're having a great day. Love you guys. Have a great day.